Hello and welcome back to another article from the AHF. Today I'm going to be talking about whether you should cross-train with multiple swords or multiple weapon styles, whether it is European or not. And the simple answer is, yes you should. And why would that be? Well, historically, how often were both opponents matched in terms of weapon and style? Well, often enough, yes they would be, and yet there are so many examples where it is completely different because you're fighting a fighter from a different country, a different part of the world, or just a different weapon in your own country. If you look to the 16th century, for example, where a lot of what we practice in the club is around that era, not the military saber stuff, but going back to the rapier, the side sword, the sword and buckler, the long sword, all of these weapons, they were all used together at the same time period. They overlapped one another by a long way. So if you look to a time period like Elizabethan England, for example, you will find, still, longswords being used. Now, a lot of them would have been complex hilted longswords, but not necessarily all. You still will find two-handed swords, full two-handers, montante, spy-handers, you'll see them as well. Again, not so often, but you will find them. Then you will also find all manner of side swords, all kinds of rapiers, back swords and basket hilts and various kinds of sabres, just so many different kinds of swords. And then you start to think about, well, what about pole arms? I've seen a coroner's report where off-duty militia fighters ended up getting into a brawl where one of them was equipped rapier and dagger, one had sword and buckler, one had um, a staff, and the other had um, a rapier and buckler, I think it was. They all equipped differently, and notice there was a pole arm in there. And the staffs that were carried in Britain, which is often the kind of thing you'd, you'd not so much carry in towns, but you would use going cross-country, is they were long staffs, six to eight foot as a sort of a, a typical sort of size, and they were often metal capped and sometimes with a spike on. Now, what have you ended up with there? A spear, basically. And even if it doesn't have an actual spike on it, a six to eight foot hardwood staff is enough to crack your skull open, break your fingers and joints and all kinds of things, and uh, kind of injuries you really want to avoid. Um, if you didn't train, against all these other weapon combinations and using those weapon combinations, you're just at a huge disadvantage. Um, I think it would be a foolish swordsman uh, or fighter generally who didn't actually both practice a few different styles so they understood them and practice against those styles with their favoured weapon. Because no, it's not a video game. You can't scroll with your mouse or your wheel to change your weapon in the middle of a sort of a fight. No, you can't. You're going to be carrying and using whatever you've got on you at the time which in the Renaissance, for example, most men would be carrying a sword, a dagger, and potentially a knife as well, and that would be it. So it's your chosen sword, which, as I said, can be quite a range of weapons, but it's most likely going to be some variety of rapier or side sword. And then you might well have to face anything like sword and buckler, or back sword, or two-handed sword, or a staff. You could even have to deal with things like other pole arms, such as partisans and halberds. So there's quite a range there. And of course, sword and shield, because the rotella, um, or rondella, which is sort of the you know, metal shields, were still quite popular, not just in Europe, you think of the Spanish using them, but they were actually still quite popular in the 16th century in Britain, and you see them being equipped to militia units quite often. So, I would say you need to actually practice a few styles yourself anyway, because practicing the weapon will give you a huge understanding of it. The number of times I've met people with, who you know, just train longsword by, the, by itself, in isolation, and they want to have a fight against a rapier, and they get thrashed. Unbelievably so. And it isn't because the rapier is fundamentally a superior weapon. It is a little better suited to a one-on-one -on -one unarmoured fight than a longsword. It is basically tailored to it. But they shouldn't be losing that badly. They should still have a reasonable chance. It should only affect the fight a little bit. Individual skill still is the overriding factor in a fight between two people. Um, so, you should practice a few styles. Go back to, again, the Renaissance and the London Masters of Defence who sort of controlled and regulated sword practice at that time. They expected you to be able to learn and, and actually be able to teach. I think it was either five or seven weapon forms in a two-year period. So you had to learn to use them and then actually be able to teach them as a kind of a assistant instructor, which was the provost uh, qualification or, or, or rank. So you needed to learn to use multiple styles. Now what does that mean? Well I would recommend that you choose your personal 
choice of sword, whether it's a side sword or rapier or whatever you want to do. And then learn to use a dagger, learn some basic grappling and wrestling skills. And I mean basic, I mean, your good distance work will ensure that you can stay out of gra gra <laughs> grappling and wrestling most of the time in an unarmoured fight. Armoured fighting is quite different still. But in terms of civilian self-defence, learn some basic grapples, disarms, that kind of stuff. Learn to use your dagger, it's really important. You've learned to use your sword, then learn to use a two-handed sword and a two-handed polearm. So something like a staff or a two-handed spear. Also, learn to use combinations. So sword and buckler or rapier and dagger, and they aren't so different. They can be used interchangeably. So there you go, you've got something like four or five things, styles to work on. And it's important that not only do you learn them, but you then mix them up in your sparring. It's really, really important that people who don't mix them up in their sparring, they come unstuck so quickly when they actually then have to fight something different in the fight. So you need to actually, okay, you've learned to use rapier, now go and use it against a back sword, you know, a basket hilt type weapon, and against a long sword. Actually try it. Um, and, and reasonably often, just so you've got an understanding of how it works. So yes, I would say cross train in multiple styles, and I don't care really whether that is all European or not, it's your choice. Um, but definitely a mix of styles and put them into your sparring so you have an understanding of how it actually works when it gets down to it in the fight. So um, there you go, mix it up. Thanks for watching.